Park was not only a gifted rapper, he was an actor starring in films like Poetic Justice and Juice. Despite a successful film career and more than $60 million in album sales, at the time of his death, he was reportedly in debt to Death Row Records. Before his death, Tupac agreed to a free album deal with Death Row, worth $3.5 million. In exchange, Suge Knight agreed to come up with the $1.4 million in bail money. The contract was handwritten and signed while he was in jail. The lawyer who oversaw the agreement worked for Death Row, so there was a conflict of interest. Suge also bought Tupac's mother, Afeni Shakur, a house. She was believed to be homeless at the time. On the 7th of September 1996, Tupac was fatally shot in Vegas. At the time of his death, some shocking information was revealed about the state of his finances. Tupac had barely anything to show for his chart-topping career. He had two cars, reportedly around $100,000 in the bank, and he didn't own his home. He absolutely thought he was quite rich and that his family would, you know, be rich for ever. I discovered he had next to zero, next to nothing. I discovered that the home that he had thought that he had just bought was not his. Watch for more on his net worth back then and today in 2020. His mother, Afeni, said that while Tupac was alive, he had concerns about his earnings. He asked to see his accounts numerous times but was always fobbed off. Tupac would receive gifts such as Rolls Royces, jewelry, and other luxury items from his label. But after his death, it was discovered that these were just given to distract him from the reality of his accounts and to stop him from asking questions. He was well aware of the situation though and sought to find a lawyer independent of Death Row shortly before his death. Death Row Records claimed that Tupac was several million dollars in debt when he died, despite his high album sales. This was probably due to the nature of his contract. The royalty rate must have been low, and the label wanted to recoup the money that was put into his projects. In an effort to pay off the debt, Tupac's estate released numerous albums posthumously and singles such as I Ain't Mad At Ya, Toss It Up, Changes, and Ghetto Gospel, which was produced by Eminem. Ghetto Gospel reached number one in four different countries. At the time, many of his previous platinum selling albums went multi-platinum again. As it goes, an artist usually makes more in death than they do alive. Tupac made the list of one of the top earning deceased celebrities. Afeni controlled her son's estate after his death. She set up the Tupac Amaru Shakur Foundation in 1997 to give young people from disadvantaged backgrounds the opportunity to enter the world of arts. In 2007, she took Death Row Records to court to put an injunction on them, forcing them to release the rest of Tupac's unreleased songs in the label's vaults. The material was recorded at the height of Park's career in late 1995 and throughout 1996. Stories have been told of Tupac having a bed in the music studio and writing four or five songs at a time. He ended up recording 20 albums worth of songs while at Death Row Records. Friends said he did this because he believed he was going to die young and always spoke about it. He wanted to record as many songs as possible to leave a legacy. There are songs yet to be released to the public till this day. Afeni also set up a production company called Amaru Entertainment, through which the multi-platinum double disc Are You Still Down, Remember Me was released. The album contained a selection of songs recorded before his death. Tupac didn't have a spouse at the time of his death, although he was briefly married to Keisha Morris while in jail. Nor did he have any children. Unfortunately, he did not have a will. His mother and father Billy Garland were the immediate next of kin, so technically they both had a claim to a share of his estate. But Billy and Afeni were never married, and under California law, in order to be an heir, unwed fathers must prove that they had enough presence in the child's life. The court had to decide 
if he had spent enough time with Tupac and offered him enough monetary support. Some refer to this as the deadbeat dad law. This is Tupac's biological father, Billy Garland. This is a picture of Billy and his wife, seen here with Tupac and his wife. I asked Billy when he'd lost touch with Tupac. Uh, 76, 77. How old was he then? He was about six, five. He was born in 71. And then five. he went off, what, to California? Or? Went to Baltimore. He went to California. He moved around New York several times. And so... Um, Why did they move so often? Well, she uh, was... Uh, on crack. She was on she was on drugs. She did drugs at the time. And uh, one time he was living in shelters. So Pac really had a bad life. Billy was an intermittent presence in Tupac's life. So he did not meet the criteria to be appointed an heir. He was initially denied any stake in Tupac's estate. He appealed this ruling and a 900,000 settlement was reached on the condition he didn't use Tupac's name or likeness. The amount included his court costs, which ran into the hundreds of thousands. Billy wasn't around during Tupac's childhood, but he did contact him after he became famous. When the Quad Studio shooting occurred, he rushed to the hospital to see his son. There, he bumped into Biggie Smalls. He said Biggie was respectful and concerned for Park, and that he didn't believe he had anything to do with the shooting. Tupac has a half-sister on his father's side. They spoke on the phone briefly, but never met in person. Sadly, in 2016, activist and mother of Tupac, Afeni Shakur, passed away from heart failure. At the time of her death, Billy said, It's a sad day. Her contributions to this world will always be remembered. We weren't really active in each other's lives, but the pain is magnified when it's the mother of your child. We had a lot of legal issues that got blown out of proportion. I regret that. It's just a shock that she's gone. I hope she'll be at peace. At the time, questions were raised about who was going to take over Tupac's estate. Former chairman and CEO of Warner Brothers, Tom Wally, was appointed trustee of the estate. Tom also was one of the founders of Interscope Records, who handled A&R. He was the first to sign Tupac and he managed the launch of his debut album, Tupacalypse Now, Strictly For My, and Tupac's number one album, Me Against the World. Tupac was the first artist to have a number one album while incarcerated. Even after Tupac signed with Death Row Records, which took over his A&R, Tom Wiley was still close to Park. Following his death, Wiley returned to A&R, and executive produced a host of posthumous releases. The final album released from Death Row Records was The Best of Tupac in 2007, which was a double disc. Afeni's attorney, Howard King, confirmed that Tom Wiley was the first appointed trustee of Tupac's estate back in 2013 and that he would continue to handle Tupac's affairs. He was highly respected and thought to be the best person for the job to handle such a huge responsibility. Tupac's former production partner, Gobi Rahimi, said that in the past, estate holders did not have Afeni and Tupac's best interests at heart, but he praised the decision to appoint Wally, calling him the most fit man for the job. Tom is actually someone who cares about Tupac's legacy, and someone who actually had an authentic relationship with Tupac is in a position of power now. Things seem more hopeful and positive than they have in the last 20 years, he said. Today, Tupac's estate is reported to be worth around 40 to 50 million dollars, his music is still as popular as ever and is introduced to new generations all the time. So it continues to earn millions every year. Afeni was the primary decision maker on behalf of her late son's estate. One major cause of concern was the fact that shortly before her death, Afeni had filed for divorce from her husband of 12 years, Gus Davis. Amidst their divorce battle, Gus requested to still be able to stay in their 50 acre ranch in North Carolina to keep his car and alimony payments of approximately $10,000 a month. This was half of what Afeni had been receiving from Tupac's estate. The two never signed a prenuptial agreement. As the couple lived in North Carolina, and according to the laws of the state, what each side is entitled to 
was solely up to the presiding judge. However, Afeni has set up a trust to control two parts music rights, which was very specific about heirs. Her estranged husband, Gus Davis, was not mentioned in the trust. So Tupac's money and music was not part of the divorce settlement. Afeni made various decisions regarding her son's image and the use of his likeness in various capacities. In 2012, Afeni allowed the use of a hologram depicting Tupac. This made him the first deceased performer to appear on stage as a hologram. She also fought for his estate in various legal battles with companies who owed royalties. Afeni made clear provisions for Tupac's estate long term, and this helped ensure that it was put into the right hands upon her death. The Tupac Amari Foundation continues to do valuable work for local communities. It is run by Tupac's sister, Sakiwa. On their website it says, Since the passing of the family's matriarch, the foundation's founder, Afeni Shakur in 2016, we are determined to inspire current and future generations through the family's rich history. The Tupac Amari Shakur Foundation has built strong followership with an eternally supportive community of volunteers who are ready to transcend to the next levels of impact work. Sakiwa Shakur, the daughter of Afeni and daughter Mutulu Shakur, sister of Tupac, has successfully led the TASF since 2016, with programs and initiatives that reflect their family's legacy and purpose. The Shakur family name is a symbol of strength, power, creativity, resilience, intelligence, and courage. Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to click the bell for more.